Guy McDonald was once a focus of the ABC's Australia story to catch a stalker. She's also an Archibald entrant and an advocate against stalking. Now, in January this year in the US, it was Stalking Awareness Month an initiative Di McDonald is pushing for it here in Australia. And as she says, it's become the forgotten crime. May in Australia is Domestic Violence Month. And according to McDonald, flyers promoting the month fails to even list stalking, which is ridiculous. With the work McDonald's been doing to create change and awareness, more needs to be done. And it's a complex puzzle that she's trying to fix. And join us once again at The Informer is Di McDonald to discuss why stalking <coughs> is an issue that needs to gain greater attention than what it already has been. Morning, Di. Morning, Michael. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. Now, we've recently seen coercive control come onto the books as, as a uh, crime. Why yeah. isn't stalking receiving the same attention? I really have no idea why it isn't, you know, in every case, you know, where someone is murdered or whatever, you can back it in that there would have been stalking involved in the beginning. So I think, you know, if they focus on stalking to begin with, the more violent crimes may not happen. There's a there's a um, pattern of behaviour that these people show everyone if if you look, mm. and people just don't look. Yeah, it, and it seems to have become so much easier and more enabled with technology mm. now, where we see uh, reports of the little air tags and phones being bugged and cars mm. and all of this stuff, which must be so frightening. And you mm. yourself were a victim of this, which just yeah. must make you live in fear, thinking that you could be. Uh, being followed or watched from anywhere. Oh, yeah, my hypervigilance is um, through the roof at the moment because the, um, he's been released from jail and the two-year corrections order also has now expired. So, um, yeah, and with uh, some of the apps that they can put on your phone to track you, they just need your phone number and to be somewhere close to you and bang, it's, it's on your phone. Yeah. Um... And you don't know it unless you're looking for it. And... Di, how do we move this forward? How do we get this in front of the right people? Because there are some fantastic advocates working in this space. Exactly. How do we raise awareness? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to contact everyone at the moment, uh, just to put the word out there. You know, after President Biden declared January Stalking Awareness Month in the US, and it's also in Canada for the same month, and they use yellow as their ribbon of choice which um it just promotes deceit and cowardness that that's why they chose the color yellow although we tend to use it here for cancer and things like that um not sure how we would go with the color but i have emailed the prime minister i did receive a response um but it was just a computer generated response so if he doesn't look at it um apparently one of the other ministers will get back to me so, mm -hmm. yeah, I have in, in the past emailed um, the Minister for Women and I never heard back. It, it's, it's just banging your head against a wall, just trying to get people to notice how severe it is and just the, the tricks that these stalkers can get up to and it costs them nothing. When you think of the electoral roll, um, if they have your birth date, they can just go on the electoral roll, type that in, and then it comes up with all of your information. That's all they need, and it's free. Yes. So unless a victim knows that they can also be silent on the electoral roll, they have to fill out a form and a stat deck and, you know, apply for it. But then if anyone types in your name on the electoral roll, if you're a silent electorate, the only thing that comes up is your name. It does not show where you are. And another thing, if you buy a property, if you escape and somehow manage to buy your own house and feel settled and everything else, all they have to do is go through the titles office online and do a title search in your name. It costs them $15. Yeah. And then they have you. You think you've gotten out and you've bought your own place, you've moved away, um, yet changed your life, you've escaped, and then boom, they have you again. 
So you think that you're doing the right thing and hiding yourself, you know, shutting down your social media so that it's not public and even don't have it as friends of friends because you don't know if he's friends with your friends. If you've blocked them, you you don't know. Yeah, a lot of the times they actually groom the friends. Just exactly exactly right. Close. Yeah. Um, in Victoria, the pendulum seems to have swung more to the perpetrators than the actual victims. We seem to be more concerned with perpetrators' rights and their rehabilitation. Meanwhile, we, we have victims such as yourself living in fear, always looking over their shoulder because, exactly. as you say, your your perpetrator is out. You don't get to know anything about him, but who mm. knows what information he's trying to find out about you. Yeah, um, yeah. If stalking was made a, a crime, if he accessed that information, if he was seen to be taking steps to locate or to stalk you, mm-hmm. then he could be uh, charged and and you know, uh, reprisoned. Well, that would be the ideal solution for me. I still have an intervention order in place until 2027. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what he's doing at the moment. There are actually some things going on at my house, which I can't talk about at the moment, Mm -hmm. um, which is a bit unnerving, to say the least. Um, After two years of him actually obeying the corrections order, but, yeah, within 10 days of it expiring, yeah, there's strange things happening at my house. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> let's be clear that the stats also show that the most dangerous time for a woman is immediately after that intervention order. Yeah, it's- yeah. They're vulnerable yeah. because, yeah, they don't have all that security in place or what they think is security. For me, an intervention order is just a piece of paper. He's never acknowledge that and he has um convictions going back to the 80s with previous victims you know so yeah. that's yeah, what we say convictions, you know really do need to be more aware of stalking um i have been working with the victims of crime commissioner in regard to policy changes for the victims charter so just to give the victims an awareness of what their rights are. I didn't even realise there was a victim's charter. So <laughs> that was news to me. But to, um, yeah, to help her with policy changes in regard to that, to make it a little bit more victim-centric, really, yeah. yeah, so that we're aware of it. Yeah. Well, all right, Di, we'll, we'll leave it there and we'll look forward to seeing <laughs> Seeing me saying, yes, we need Stalking Awareness Month in January to coincide with the US and Canada and bring about awareness so that victims out there know how to keep themselves safe, to hide themselves and still go on living their lives. Yeah, you should not have to live in fear or looking over your shoulder at at any stage. And, you know, let's be clear, these laws, we have many laws Mm -hmm. in place around this. But the enforcement of them, that's where it seems to fall over. And while we keep going, we're going to put a new law in place, let's really just start enforcing the laws we already have. Yeah, enforcing. You know, stalking has a 10-year maximum sentence. How about we start using the maximum instead of a minimum? My stalker got eight months and was actually out within just over six months because he earned credits off his sentence. Mm. And that was and because of lockdown here in Melbourne, yeah. That, that's a really important point you've just raised there, Di. When we hear the government talking about we're increasing the penalties, listen mm-hmm. very carefully because what they're increasing is the maximum. Yeah. So they're which increasing. They use. <laughs> yeah, which no. is up to the discretion. When they start increasing the minimum, Minimums. when they specifically say we're increasing the minimum penalty, Yes. That's when the government is actually doing more than pay lip service. Exactly. Yeah. They they seriously need to look at coercive control, gaslighting, everything, everything across the board. And even the government departments that they can just Google and get your information. That needs to change also. Yeah. All right, Di, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and good luck with your course. Thank you.